Okay, let's start externally here first. Um, the sac-like structure you see here, that is going to be the scrotum. And when we cut that open and we look at these two structures here, we have two testes among other structures. This would be, uh, this is the left testis, right testis. Remember, testis is singular for testes, plural. And the testes are covered by a couple of layers. So um, here I have the right testis, and we've cut this open right here. This outer layer is called the tunica vaginalis. So what I have right here in, in between my two fingers is the tunica vaginalis. And then the layer that is covering the testis directly, so this right here, that is going to be the tunica albuginea. So tunica vaginalis, tunica albuginea, and remember that both of these layers are covering each testis. Let's now look at some other structures in this area. Here, um, this part right here that connects to the testis, this is the um, epididymis. Okay, the epididymis covers the cephalic end of the testis, and it will lead into a passageway. So notice that I'm still kind of singling this out because we have this cut open, but there is a passageway that runs through this cord right here called the vas deferens or the ductus deferens. And that tube, which is within this area, that tube specifically transports sperm. So the other things that are within this structure here called the spermatic cord is the testicular artery. We can actually see a little bit of it right there. And then we have kind of a complex of veins called the pampiniform plexus. We don't really visualize those well, or they, they didn't get injected with the dye super well in this area. But the vas deferens, or ductus deferens, whichever term you wanna learn, the vas deferens, the testicular artery, and the vein, and then we have the pampiniform plexus as well, all of those are bundled within this structure here called the spermatic cord. That spermatic cord is going to create an opening into the abdominal wall here. So we have to think this is on the outside of the specimen's body, but we have to make a connection with the external stuff to the internal stuff over here. So this spermatic cord is going to run up here. Notice that there's a little opening that goes into the abdominal wall. See that right there? That is called the inguinal canal. There is one on the right side associated with the right testis, and then there is one on the left side that is associated with the left testis. So you can see that this cord is coming up like this, and then we have this little opening right here, and that's how all of this stuff on the outside of the body connects to the stuff that's within the abdominal cavity right there. Because it's possible to have something called an inguinal hernia, meaning uh, that um, this opening um, might have some So other structures in this area, this right here is the urinary bladder, okay, that pouch-like organ situated like so. But when I flip it upwards like this, we can see that uh, this is the urethra. Remember the urethra is what transports urine from the urinary bladder to the outside. So urinary bladder and then the urethra And then right here, we have the penis, and there are different parts of it. Um, the whole structure right here is called the penis. Um, you have the, the shaft or the body. And then this portion right here, just at the end, okay, that is called the glans penis, or it's also known as the head of the penis. And then you'll notice that there is this skin right here that surrounds the glans penis or the head, and that is called the
the prepuce, or it's also commonly known as the foreskin. So the skin that's only right here, surrounding the glans penis, is the prepuce. All right, that's all I have for you for the male reproductive organs on a feline specimen. Pretty straightforward, um, but make sure you're definitely reviewing these terms so you become um, well familiar with them and then compare these structures with the models and pictures that you have um, in our online resources. And I think you guys will do well.